Wait, can you leave now? Yeah. What do you mean? What? Stop. I didn't start recording yet. <laughs> Maybe I did. Welcome back, Camden Catholic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, so that was Mama Terry, and this is my dad standing right behind me, like looming om ominously. Yeah. <laughs> you can wave, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to pick up, uh, finish up what we were talking about in class, right? We were uh, talking about the Peloponnesian War and how it was honestly probably the very first Western civilization, civil-like war, right? Because remember, a civil war is a war that actually exists within inside of its own country between two competing factions. Now... <clears throat> You could also say that it's not a civil war simply because Athens and Sparta were independent states at the time. But then again, when we think about Greece, we also still, this, at this point in history, we think about them as one unified culture, right? So, and of course, always you need to remember things like, uh, why were there so many Greek city-states? Does anybody know the answer to that question? That's a very nice job, Raylan. That is exactly right. So, like, uh, they, uh, the mountains actually separated them, right, making them very geographically isolated, things like that. So, and a lot of it had to do with, like, long-standing issues between the two of them. And, of course, the, what was the military alliances that was made by each? Anybody want to answer? Good job, Liam. I heard, I heard you over there. That's exactly right. So, uh, Sparta, right, had the Peloponnesian League. And then Athens had the Delian League, right? So, but let's keep going. So, the war is going to result in a stalemate eventually. And remember, a stalemate is when neither side is winning, okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. So when neither side is winning, and usually what this results in is brash action from either uh, competing force, mainly because you're trying to break the stalemate, right? Now, and the reason why the stalemate actually like came about, remember, is because Athens is going to use their naval fleet to surround the isle of, or the chunk of uh, Greece called Peloponnese, and then Sparta is going to use their land forces to actually surround Athens outside of that wall that who had built again. Bang! Very nice job, Bren. That is exactly right. That uh, Pericles is built, right? So, oh, he's baby. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so anyway, but unfortunately, it's going to stink to be Athens in this situation because Athens is going to be weakened heavily by a plague that broke out, and we actually believe that this plague that broke out in Athens, excuse me, during the 400s BC, may have actually been a strain of the Black Death Plague that's going to show up later in Europe, but that's caused by a bacteria called Yersinia pestis, all right? So, now it's going to kill one out of every three people in the population, including Pericles, including Pericles, Athens' most able leader, right? Now, as we talked about, he had been elected 29 times in a row. Well, the reason why he wasn't elected 30 years in a row is because he's going to die from the plague, right? So, now, with Pericles out of the picture... Who do you think, what type of people are going to step into massive leadership roles and actually try to, I would love some coffee, thank you mama. Um, anyway, so, that are, are going to try and step into these leadership roles and actually really, really, really try to, like, take Athens in a better direction. Um, I hear a lot of answers right now, but unfortunately, none of y'all are very dead on the money. I did. <laughs> like, so... The big one that's going to step up are going to be the philosophers. In particular, Socrates is going to start lending a lot of expert opinions, right? Well, again, what I said that's very important, write this down really quick and then underline it like three times, breaking the stalemate, right? To break a stalemate, you have to have brash, immediate, very, very, very straightforward action, right? So Athens is going to take the advice of uh, someone, but we'll talk about who that is in a second. Um, Athens is going to take the advice to actually go and invade a small island that Sparta had set up, like a small little colony on. Let me back up and I'll show you. Um, where's my map? Where's my map? Where's my map? Where's my map? Uh, here we go. So, I'm sorry, what's up, Mom? Uh, no, no, no sugar, thank you. All right, so anyway, so right here, if you look at this map, right, we've got Peloponnese right here, Sparta right here, Athens up... Where are they at? Um, Athens is right over here, right? Over on the border of the Aegean Sea, so they're not separated by too much, right? Well, a lot of it has to do with, like, and as you can see, Spartan campaigns and Athenian campaigns, these are all the colors of their different alliances, right? So the Delian League was actually in this, like, kind of pinkish, uh, orange color, um, and then their allies are going to be in the orange as well, and then the, <clears throat> excuse me, and then... The green is going to be Sparta, and that's the Peloponnesian League, right? So they're actually fighting against each other, mostly on the mainland of Greece. Well, good for you, extremely smart. 
These little colonies that had been set up over here in Italy, particularly on Sicily by the Greeks, you see that day, um, so are going to serve as major, major land and farm holdings during this war. Because remember, when you're fighting an ancient war, in ancient warfare methods, one of your biggest risks is you're going to run out of food eventually, right? Uh, so Sparta had actually set up a very small one right here on Sicily, and it's called Syracuse, right? And they actually sent a legion of their own force to try and defend this area, okay? So... As you can see, there's a couple of other little colonies that were set up on the island of Sicily, but Syracuse was major, major, major importance to Sparta. So, the Athenians are going to try and think to themselves, well, we stand to choke Sparta out and then take out all of their farm reserves if we successfully attack and destroy Syracuse. Now, keep in mind, though, keep in mind that... Athens' main ability is their naval fleet, right? Like, again, remember, let's jump back again, and this is what an, an ancient Athenian naval vessel looked like, right? So this was their main milieu. What they could do was they could destroy anyone in the water, right? Well, remember, Sparta didn't have a lot of naval vessels because they never traded with anybody, and they didn't care. So when Athens actually shows up to Syracuse, there's an artist's depiction of it right here, they are going to be absolutely ransacked by Sparta, all right? So the Syracuse invasion is going to be a massive mistake in 416 BC. When they invade, when the Athenians invaded Sicily, just in the process of getting on the boats, the Athenian soldiers were killed in the water, all right? So as you can see them right here in hip deep water, because of the non-natural harbors that existed on the island of Sicily, the Athenians all had to unload before they ever actually got to land. So they made them very, very, very easy targets. Now, Guess who's going to convince them to go on this failed Syracuse expedition? Yeah, Socrates is going to be the one that actually convinced them to go. So, I mean, I do understand that Socrates' famous quote, all I know is that I know nothing. Well, in this situation, you really didn't know anything. So, anyway, now, they hoped that it was going to actually destroy Sparta's food supply, but they were surrounded and annihilated. Now, this is going to give Sparta an upper hand. Now, is this going to count Athens completely out? Is the war over now? It's not, right? It's going to result in another stalemate, unfortunately. And Sparta's only going to find one way to win this war, and it's by doing one of the grimiest things that has ever been done in all of history. It has to do with forming an alliance with someone. Who do you think they're going to form an alliance with? All right? I hear a lot of y'all shouting some stuff out. It's very, very impressive stuff. Uh, but a lot of y'all are missing one key group of people. That's right. The Persians, right? Sparta is going to ally with Persia, the people that they just got done defending two separate invasions from and their most hated arch rival, and they're going to borrow their naval vessels, resulting in a, the destruction of Athens and the Delian League, and Sparta is going to win the war. Bet y'all didn't see that coming. Everybody always thinks that Athens is going to win the war outright, okay? So, they allied with Persia, borrowed their naval vessels, and destroyed Athens. Well, when the war ends, the Syracuse is going to weaken the Athenians, but they held out for about 10 more years, all right? So Sparta is finally going to conquer Athens in 404 BC, and Athens is going to have to give up its navy, it's going to have to give up its empire, and also they had to follow Spartan foreign policy, which was actually more along the lines of don't force anyone to use a government that they don't want to use. You need to allow people to take over others if they so choose. So the, the Spartan foreign policy actually set up some really, really hostile uh, trade relations within ancient Greece, right? So it actually is going to further the law, like, the fact, write this down really quick, fourth bullet, fifth bullet point right there. Athens losing weakened the alliances and the strength of the rest of ancient Greece, right? So all of those separate city-states are now weaker because they're not actually in a collective anymore. They're actually all now kind of every man for themselves again which is going to leave it open for one guy in particular to actually come in and destroy the entire thing, right? In the aftermath of the Peloponnesian War, Athens was the strongest, but now Sparta is currently the strongest after that is over. Much of Greece is completely destroyed, so they're very, very weak. Greece is severely weakened, weakened economically and militarily. Greek culture is going to come to a grinding, grinding slowdown point. And this is going to leave room for Alexander the Great to actually show up and destroy most of these things and conquer all of Greece leading into the Hellenistic period. All right? So that's going to be it, though. But this is my house in North Carolina. Y'all just met my mom and my dad, right? So uh, anyway, but I'll see y'all on Tuesday. Can and Kathy, you want to say bye, Mom? Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'll see y'all on Tuesday, Cam and Kathy, all right? Have a good day off. Can't wait to see y'all then.